Hi, this is Daniel DeTuro. Are you concerned about your diet providing enough potassium? In this video, I'll share how much dietary potassium do you need, blood potassium levels, low and high potassium symptoms, who should limit potassium, and high and low potassium diets. When I published 20 high potassium foods, I never expected it to have over 1 million views or the number of comments about dietary potassium deficiencies. While potassium deficiency is rare in the West and there's no US RDA, some viewers firmly believe everyone needs 4,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day. Their source of information is usually popular commercial websites. Government and medical school websites are dismissed as corporate propaganda. In many cases, website posts reference government guidelines and government-funded research. Most readers never read beyond the posted information. This post doesn't say everyone must consume 4,700 milligrams of potassium daily. The higher value applies to athletes, African Americans, and high-risk groups. They claim most healthy people should consume between 3,500 to 4,700 milligrams per day. And this article hasn't been updated in almost four years. In 2020, the National Institutes of Health updated its potassium fact sheet for professionals. According to the NIH, adequate intake, not RDA, is 2,600 milligrams for females and 3,400 milligrams for adult males. The fact there's no US RDA for potassium doesn't stop some websites from using RDA instead of AI. The post using RDA claims males and females should aim for 4,700 milligrams per day, except for lactating women who should aim for 5,100 milligrams per day, almost twice the NIH recommendation. Obtaining 2,300 to 3,400 milligrams a day from your diet is easier than 4,700 to 5,100 milligrams. Several viewers have commented the only way to assure getting 4,700 milligrams a day is by taking potassium supplements. Some takeaways from this section is there's no RDA for potassium and adequate intake varies by sex, race, and health. Most credible sources do not recommend everyone consume 4,700 milligrams daily. And beware of anonymous, unsubstantiated comments of rampant potassium deficiencies and the need for potassium supplements. In my research, I found no correlation between dietary potassium and blood potassium. As I've shared, there is no one-size-fits-all amount of daily dietary potassium. A blood test will tell you if your blood potassium level is low, normal, or high. Normal blood potassium should range between 3.6 to 5.2 millimoles per liter. Levels less than 2.5 and greater than 6.1 can be life-threatening. Your kidneys regulate blood potassium. Kidney disease and prescription medications known to increase blood potassium can raise levels to dangerous levels. Low blood potassium can be caused by your diet, increased urination from taking diuretics, and excessive sweating. Potassium is an electrolyte secreted when you sweat. People who sweat heavily doing strenuous activities in hot weather may need more dietary potassium compared to someone doing sedentary work in an air-conditioned office. Symptoms of low potassium can include weakness, lack of energy, high blood pressure, muscle cramps, constipation, tingling and numbness, heart arrhythmia, and abnormal electrocardiograms. 
High potassium can cause nausea, weakness, muscle fatigue, paralysis, and heart arrhythmia. Many of these symptoms also apply to other medical conditions. Weakness and fatigue can be due to several types of anemia, inadequate sleep, or other medical conditions. A low-fiber diet and IBS can cause constipation. Tingling and numbness could be signs of type 2 diabetes. Instead of speculating if your diet provides enough potassium, have your blood potassium level checked. If your kidneys are healthy and your body needs 2,500 milligrams a day, the excess 2,200 milligrams from a 4,700 milligram diet will go right down the drain. And for some people, a high potassium diet can cause serious illness or death. Not everyone should consume over 4,000 milligrams a day. As I've shared, people with chronic kidney disease or taking prescription drugs that increase blood potassium may need to avoid high potassium foods. Low potassium diets provide about 2,000 milligrams a day versus 3,500 to 5,000. This serving of homemade teriyaki chicken has about 500 milligrams. 25% of a 2,000 milligram daily limit. For people on low potassium diets, it can take months to determine if a diet consistently provides adequate levels of all essential nutrients. If you're healthy and your blood potassium is low, eating more high potassium foods could be the solution. And you're not limited to the 20 foods presented in my first video. Several viewers have commented that I omitted one or more of their favorite foods. There are hundreds of high potassium foods. Some diets provide more than others. Keto diets are one example of a low potassium diet. Most keto diets are 60 to 80 percent fat. While butter may be back, it and other fats and oils are a poor source of essential nutrients. For a keto diet that's 70% fat, essential nutrients must come from the remaining 30%. Keto diets are extremely low-carbohydrate diets. Carbs are plant foods and a low-calorie source of potassium, essential nutrients, antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory phytochemicals. People on medically supervised keto diets usually take dietary supplements to prevent nutrient deficiencies. Pure fats and oils have zero potassium. High-fat meats have less potassium than leaner cuts. When it comes to dairy foods, milk and Greek yogurt are your best sources of potassium. Butter, eggs, and cheese are good low potassium foods. Rice, especially white rice, is a good low potassium food compared to other grains like quinoa, corn, and wheat. Nuts are high in potassium and calories. People on low potassium diets should limit nuts to a one ounce or less serving. A four ounce serving of almonds has about 840 milligrams of potassium and 655 calories. Seeds are also a good source ranging from 45 milligrams to 240 milligrams per one ounce serving. When it comes to red meat, a 4-ounce serving ranges from about 300 milligrams to 440 milligrams. A 4-ounce serving of poultry provides about the same amount as red meat, ranging from 240 milligrams for turkey breast to 475 milligrams for goose. A 4-ounce serving of fish or seafood has about the same range from a low of 190 milligrams for oysters to 465 milligrams for cod. Tubers are high in potassium, but also high in calories compared to other vegetables. 
One four ounce serving can provide between 400 and 900 milligrams. A four ounce serving of root vegetables provides between 200 to 500 milligrams. A four ounce serving of fruit can provide between 120 to 575 milligrams. While avocados are high in potassium, they're also higher in calories. For 200 calories, you can get 800 milligrams of potassium by eating eight ounces of banana. Berries like fruit are over 80% water. Blueberries may be considered a superfood, but not when it comes to potassium. They're better suited for low potassium diets. When it comes to melons, cantaloupe has more than twice the potassium of watermelon. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower are a good low calorie source. Four ounces of kale provides about 500 milligrams. Leafy green vegetables are also a good low calorie source with spinach providing over two times the potassium of broccoli rob. A four ounce serving of beans provides up to 50% of the daily adequate intake. With up to 2,000 milligrams per serving, beans are a food that should be limited or excluded from low potassium diets. Low potassium diets include keto, low carb paleo, low carb, carnivore, low or no oxalate, and low or no lectin diets. High potassium diets include DASH, vegan, low fat, vegetarian, and Mediterranean. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. Thank you for watching and healthy eating.